Hello, everyone, and welcome to Metta Meditation this evening. I hope that your meditation practice brings you happy and positive experience. Uh, last week, I mentioned the name of Richard Davidson. Maybe you do not know who he is. Well, this evening, I will summarize some of his findings on how meditation can help us transform our mind and emotion. Professor Richard Davidson is an American psychologist and professor of psychology and psychiatry at the University of Wisconsin at Madison, that is in the United States. And he's also the founder and chair of the Center for Healthy Minds. He has written several important books on meditation, such as The Emotional Life of Your Brain, Altered Traits, and the science of meditation, to how to change your brain, mind, and body. Now, early in his uh, academic career, uh, Professor Davidson focused his research on the negative sides of emotions and adversity. So basically, he wants to look at how the brain circuits work for people who are more vulnerable to stress and develop a depression or anxiety. So basically looking at the effects of stress on the mind and what it does to the mind. But his research focus changed after meeting His Holiness the Dalai Lama in 1992. Because the Dalai Lama asked him, why don't you, why can't we use the same tools to study positive emotions like kindness and compassion? So instead of focusing on the negative traits of the mind, why not focus on the positive traits? All right. So uh, Professor Davidson's research is on uh, neuroplasticity. Now our brains are changing, wittingly or unwittingly. Now most of the time we're not even aware of the forces that change our, 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 our brain since we have very little control over these forces. However, once we learn about meditation and what it does to our brain, we begin to understand that we can indeed rewire our brain in a positive direction. Indeed, we should take more responsibility for our own brains and what it does in transforming the mind. The well-being of people in modern societies face four challenges that shapes our brains, and they do so without our consent or knowledge. So this is what you call unwittingly. Now, Professor Davidson mentioned about four things, four challenges. First is what we call distractibility. Now, research indicates that if we were to ask people three questions, number one, what are they doing right now? Where is their mind right now? At this moment, how happy or unhappy they are, are they? How happy or unhappy are they? On average, he says that an adult spends about 47% of her life or his life not paying attention to what this is doing. Okay, so most of the time, half of the time people are distracted. Their mind is not where it should be. They're not paying attention. And what they discover is that there is a strong relation uh, uh, between being significantly unhappy and not paying attention to what they're doing. So in other words, if our mind is distracted, we're not paying attention to what we're doing. We are more inclined to be unhappy. And in fact, there is a scientific paper that draws this relation. The paper, a scientific paper is entitled, A Wandering Mind is an Unhappy Mind. Now, we also see the lack of attention, or in fact, it is attention deficit disorder. This is particularly pronounced among children. Children who grow up in front of the TV or, you know, they're always in front of the iPad or the handphone. And therefore, uh, they cannot put their mind for any duration of time on anything. So, uh, this means that there is an increase in distractibility. There are just too many things grabbing our attention. And given the correlation between unhappiness and being distracted, so you can understand why children face problems with unhappiness and irritability. Like there are many uh, reports of children committing suicide because they're very unhappy and because their minds are not focused. 
they get distracted too easily. The second challenge mentioned by uh, Professor Davidson is loneliness. Despite the fact that we are all more connected, we are interconnected using the social media, WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, the internet, uh, you know, mobile telephone, messaging uh, each other. Three quarters of the middle age, uh, in this case, the Americans, because they did research on Americans, I say that they have moderate to high level of uh, loneliness. So middle-aged people tend to be lonely, three quarters of that, about 75%. Maybe the same uh, statistics could be here. Uh, we need to undertake some, some, some research on this. This loneliness is not a passing thing. It is subjective and it impacts on our body and our physical health. In fact, recent research shows that loneliness is a predictor by, by more than two-fold magnitude of early mortality compared to obesity. In other words, when a person is prone to loneliness, his chances of uh, passing away is two times more compared to a person who is overweight. Yeah? So this tells us that loneliness have a real impact on our brains and our body. The third problem that people face in the modern age is negative self-talk and depression. So we have a narrative in our mind that we carry it around about who we are, and sometimes we have negative beliefs about ourselves. And this brings about depression. So depression is on the rise. In the West, a very large increase especially occurs among women. Women tend to be depressed. And this trend is also occurring among the teenagers in very disturbing trends of kids uh, between the ages of 12 to 17. And in fact, the incidence is much greater amongst females rather than males. So females that tend to talk negatively to themselves and become more depressed huh, compared to males. But the evidence shows that we can train our minds and we can harness the power of neuroplasticity to change the qualities of our mind. Can we change our minds? If we tend to be negative, can we change it? In fact, studies in neuroplasticity says, indeed, you can do that. You can do that through meditation. So uh, because of this depression, uh, the suicide rates are very disturbing and rising amongst the adults and teenagers. And in the United States, every single day, one teenager takes his life, all right? The fourth challenge identified by Professor Davidson is people having a loss of meaning and purpose in life. They don't see why they're living. They don't have a sense of purpose or meaning in their life. Now, these again also have a, a toll on our health and our well-being. Research shows that a person who do not have a sense of purpose uh, tends to have early death, okay? So in a recent study, they showed that people in the 60s with a low sense of purpose are more than uh, twice the likelihood of dying within five years compared to people who have a high sense of purpose. So in order to, have, to live longer, you need to have a good sense of purpose. And so, in fact, there is an intimate connection between our psychological well-being and our physical health. Yeah? Each of these challenges affect the mind and the brain. Okay, so we have these four challenges. And Professor Davidson proposed that we can develop a framework for understanding a healthy mind. There are four pillars to a healthy mind. The first pillar is developing awareness, which includes our capacity to focus our attention or to resist distractions. It also includes a quality that psychologists and neuroscientists called meta-awareness. Now, meta in this case is spelled as M-E-T-A, meta, meta-awareness, not meta, M-E-T-T-A, -T -T that uh, like in meta meditation. So it's meta-awareness, M-E-T-A. And this is our minds knowing what we are doing or knowing what our minds are doing, paying attention to the mind, you know? So sometimes 
you know, we might be reading pages in a book, but not knowing exactly what we read. So there is almost like a, a lapse in meta awareness. So we go through the physical motion of reading a book, but nothing goes inside, and we don't even know that the mind is distracted. But the moment that we know, the moment we recognize that we have been lost, and when we come back, that is what we call meta awareness. In fact, when we engage in meditation, we have to do it all the time. For instance, when you have to focus on the breath and the mind goes away, and the moment you realize the mind has gone away, when you bring the mind back, this is called meta awareness. And this is important. Uh, this is really important we need in order to develop awareness. So in meditation, we keep on doing this again and again. So we, we develop our sense of awareness and mindfulness, okay? Meta awareness. And um, you know your mind has strayed away and you bring your mind back. So this meta awareness is necessary for real transformation to take place. So this is the first awareness that we need to develop, meta awareness. The second pillar is to develop connection with people. Uh, those with good inter, uh, interpersonal relationship with others tend to be uh, you know, uh, happier. Uh, connection uh, uh, is one of the qualities that is needed uh, for developing other qualities like uh, harmonious interpersonal relationships, qualities like appreciation, kindness, compassion, being positive in outlook. But of course, sometimes when people have connection, they, you can have positive and or negative connection. So down here, we're talking about having positive connections. Eh? The third pillar is to develop insight that we have about ourselves. One end of the continuum are people who are very negative. They're very negative about themselves. They have negative self-belief and they think they're terrible. They are a loser. They are lousy. Uh, you know, they always talk down on themselves. That is the way they describe themselves. So that becomes a prescription for depression. Whereas when you have a healthy mind, you change this relationship narrative. The narrative that you have about yourself changes and the mind becomes healthy. So in meta meditation, what we do is we send loving wishes to ourselves, right? So when we do that, we change the narrative that we have about ourselves. So instead of talking down on ourselves, being negative about ourselves, we begin to uh, encourage ourselves, we begin to wish ourselves well-being. And after a while, we begin to get more positive. Okay? And you begin to create more breathing room for yourself. And you increase your sense of well-being. So that's the third pillar. The fourth pillar proposed by Professor Davidson is having a sense of purpose that our life is uh, headed in a particular direction. It is about doing, speaking, and thinking uh, with a sense of purpose. Now, even taking out a garbage, doing the laundry or cleaning your house, itself could be related to a sense of purpose. For instance, you want to keep your house clean and tidy in order to foster a good frame of mind, rather than they go, oh, I am doing this, you know, and uh, just, just disliking the fact that you have to take the garbage out and doing the laundry. So these four pillars, uh, developing awareness, developing connection with others, insight that we have of ourselves, and having a sense of purpose in our lives are essential ingredients for a healthy mind. And in fact, these four pillars, not surprisingly, as you would have actually discovered, will, could be developed by practicing meditation. So in order to qu cultivate these qualities, we have to put knowledge into practice. So instead of talking about meditation, we are actually doing meditation. Talking about meditation is one part of learning. Okay, this, this is the, cognac, the cognitive part of learning, you know, intellectual, in intellectual discourse. Uh, the other part is for us to be engaged in, to actually be doing it. And actually, uh, the first part on the cognitive part and the second part, learning by doing, operates in different parts of the uh, brain, okay? So different brain circuits are activated. I, actually, you need both in order to have a real transformation. So in neuroscience research, it is found that by practicing compassion, or in our case, if you practice metta, 
for 30 minutes a day for over two weeks. Just doing this could actually result in the rewiring of our brains. Our brains have little neurons that connect each other. So when we begin to practice compassion and we practice metta for two weeks, a duration of about 30 minutes or so, the circuits in our brains could actually get rewired. So very interestingly, the circuits of brains are not fixed, it is adaptable. That is why they call neuroplasticity. It is possible for our brain uh, connections, uh, the, the connections of brains to change. And we can harness the power of neuroplasticity to change our brain. So it was found by using this MRI scanner on the brains, they put uh, electrodes in different parts of the brain and to measure the brain waves. And for the people who are practicing compassion, before the practice and after the practice, they can actually see that there are differences in the brain. The brain actually changes. That's quite remarkable. Within two weeks, you can actually see changes occurring within the, in the circuits of the brain. And the changes in the circuits involve the prefrontal cortex, as well as the ventral stratum, stratum, yeah, a ventral stratum. So these are the circuits that are important for certain types of positive emotions. So actually, when we have positive emotions, this part of the brain gets activated. So when a person begins to practice uh, meditation, loving kindness or compassion, they strengthen the connection in this part of the brain that is associated with positive emotions. So no wonder when you begin to practice metta, you begin to have more positive emotions, you begin to have more joy and happiness in your life. It's because something's happening not only at the thought level, it is actually occurring at your brain level. The circuits are being rewired so that the parts of the brain that is connected with positive emotions, the connection becomes stronger. And that is why you have more positive feelings, more happiness about yourself, about your environment. So when you begin to practice metta, you begin to see that things begin to change. The way you see things, the way you interact with people begin to change because the wiring in your brain changes. This is what we call neuroplasticity. Right? And it can change fairly fast. Even within two weeks of practice, just like 30 minutes a day, you can actually begin to see before and after the practice. Okay? So we can see the beneficial effects of meditation on our brain and health as supported by scientific research. And uh, therefore, this should encourage us to try to practice meditation regularly. If you can, on a daily basis, if you can. Or you can incorporate this as part of your daily routine. So meditation nourishes the mind. And by nourishing the mind, we change ourselves and also the world. We reduce uh, implicit bias. We strengthen connections. We increase our achievements. And we also reduce cost of health care. <laughs> the hospital bills comes, comes down, all right? So in our practice of metta, we go into formal meditation, like what we're doing this, this thing. You sit down, close your eyes, you do metta meditation. That's okay, all right? Uh, but you can also make loving wishes without being engaged in a formal meditation. So in other words, you can also continue to practice metta without sitting down with your eyes closed. If you could just reflect in a quiet moment, bringing a loved ones in your mind, and your eyes could either be open or closed. As you bring this loved one into your mind and in your heart, you cultivate a strong aspiration that may they be happy, may they be free from suffering, and may they also share the same happiness, right? The, like, that, that you also wish for yourselves. And also you can have the same wish uh, of happiness and free from suffering for all human beings, from all beings. And as you envision a time in your life where they are facing some challenges or difficulty, if you know that somebody, uh, either a close one or a friend, is facing some challenges and difficulty, in your mind, you could make the wish, oh, may you be happy, may you be free from suffering, may you overcome your obstacles quickly. Even that is really good. 
and uh, you simply notice whatever may come up for you. Yeah? And this could be for many categories of people, including a difficult person. So this is also how you can practice metta without actually sitting down in a form of metta meditation. You can also practice metta this way. Uh, in fact, uh, when you get up in the morning, brushing your teeth and going through your daily short, it's an occasion for you also to practice metta, to have a mind and loving kindness. And as you begin to do this, the connections, the circuits in your brains get rewired. And the parts that is connected, parts of your brain that is connected with positive feelings, with happiness, the connections tend to be much stronger. So I invite you to join us on this journey. And uh, you could see how you can actually benefit from the practice of loving kindness. Okay. So let us now proceed on with the formal practice of metta. And uh, in this metta meditation, sit in a comfortable position because we're doing formal meditation right? and keeping your back straight. Uh, be aware of the flow of your breathing. That's a starting point because when you're aware of your breathing, you're just bringing your mind back. Instead of mind wandering, getting distracted, you bring the mind back. And that itself is very healing. And you feel, have a sense of comfort, feel comfortable. And bring in your mind's eye the people whom you like to share loving thoughts. Okay? And tonight I will guide you through the practice of loving kindness. So we just sound a bell. And then we proceed on to watching the breath. And after that, the inner smile. And then we go back to the breath again before we make wishes of loving kindness wishes of metta. The sound of the bell invites our mind uh, to come home for the mind to be centered. Maybe a good way of centering the mind is to wash the breath. Huh? So let us take a few deep breaths, relaxing in ourselves as we breathe in and out. Have a sense of contentment and comfort. There is nothing else that you really require right now except to turn your mind to meditation. And just by watching the breath, you can actually experience how quickly your mind gets settled. And when your mind gets settled, it also becomes more peaceful. Now let us proceed to the practice of the inner smile. Let us be aware of the crown of your head right at the top of your head, your crown area. Be aware of your crown. Have you found the crown of your head? If not, just a scalp on your head will do. Can you feel some sensations there? Okay. Let the smiling energy accumulate at your crown. Let your crown smile. Let the smile flow down to your forehead. Let your forehead smile. And bring your attention to between your eyebrow. Let the smiling energy accumulate between your eyebrows. Is it smiling now? Is there a smile there now? Now bring the smile down to your eyes. Let your eyes smile.
Now bring the smile down to your face. Smiling face. And bring your smile down your neck. At the base of your neck is your thyroid gland. Smiling at your thyroid gland, blessing your thyroid gland with love and kindness. And now to your heart, open up your heart, relax your heart, let go of the tensions and negative energies that sometimes we carry in our heart, let go, open up and relax your heart, have a sense of peace and happiness in your heart, smiling in your heart. And let the smile now radiate from your heart to your lungs. Feel the lungs breathe in easily. Have gratitude to your heart and to your lungs for keeping you alive from day to day, from moment to moment. And now, moving your attention to your solar plexus at the base of your breastbone. That's where you have the solar plexus. Negative energy sometimes tends up the solar plexus, like when you are overcome with fear, with anger, with frustration. The solar plexus gets really tense. So relax your solar plexus and put a smile at your solar plexus. Is your solar plexus smiling now? And now, just to the right side of your body, just below your rib cage is your liver. Put a smile on your liver. Soften your liver with a smile. And now moving down to your back, to your lower back, that's where your kidneys are, just below your rib cage on both sides of the spine. Direct your smile to your kidneys. Blessing your kidneys with love and kindness. Are your kidneys smiling? Make them smile. Make them feel happy. And now to the left side of your body, where you have your spleen. Smile at your spleen. And just below the spleen is the pancreas. Pancreas also rests against your stomach. Smile at your pancreas. And now be aware of your stomach and your intestines. This is your digestive system. It's a blessing to have a good, strong digestive system because this is the way we get our nutrition from our food. 
So smile, send a smile to your stomach, to your intestines. Thank you, stomach and intestines. Send your love and kindness to your stomach and intestines. Smile. And to your urinary tract and your bladder, you like this to be healthy. So send your smiling energy to your bladder, to your urinary tract. And also the postural gland for the males and the ovaries and uterus for the females. So you become more aware of your body by bringing smiles to the body, blessing the cells and organs of your body. Do you feel more relaxed and happier and more relaxed, contented right now? Taking a few deep breaths, just breathing in and breathing out and having a sense of well-being and happiness your smiles all over your body, to your organs with wishes of good health, well-being. And now to sharpen our awareness, let us be aware of our breath again. As you breathe in and out, you will feel the sensation of your breath. Many people experience their movement of the breath at the nostril area, but this is not the only area that you can experience your breath. You can also experience it maybe at the back of your mouth, in your throat, in your chest, or even in your abdomen. Wherever the experience of your breath becomes more prominent, just, just uh, attach your attention in that part. So let us be aware of the breath as we breathe in and out uh, in order that our minds do not stray away too much. We just do some counting. So as you breathe in and out, you count one, in and out, you count two and so on. Upon reaching the count of ten, you return back to number one. Right? Okay, so let us just wash the breath and, and sharpen our awareness and mindfulness in a relaxed fashion.
Now let us uh, send loving kindness to ourselves first. Uh, we send loving kindness to ourselves so that we become a source of love and kindness uh, from which, from where we can radiate our thoughts to other living beings. Uh, we make uh, four wishes. The first wish is may my heart be peaceful and free. With a smile in our heart, we say, may my heart be peace, peace, peaceful and free. The second wish is may my mind be happy. Third wish, may my body be healthy. And the fourth wish, may I be well and happy. So with a smile in our heart, let us make the wish, first wish. May my heart be peaceful and free. So as you make this wish, embrace yourself with loving kindness. And try to feel the loving wishes within. May my heart be peaceful and free. May my mind be happy. Make the wish. May my mind be happy. May my body be healthy. May I be well and happy. As you see these wishes of loving kindness, try to experience the words, experience the meaning of these words inside you. May my heart be peaceful and free. May my mind be happy. May my body be healthy. May I be well and happy. Now let us send our thoughts of loving kindness to our first group of people to whom it is easy for us to send loving kindness to because of our uh, gratitude to them. Uh, people in this group includes your parents, your grandparents, your teachers, your mentors. So you make these wishes to them. Uh, wishing them well, as you begin to think about their qualities, the sacrifices they have made, the kindness they have given to you through all these years. And with a heart filled with gratitude, you say, 
may your heart be peaceful and free and so on. You see those four wishes. Now, if you're making wishes to your mother, just imagine that your mother is seated in front of you and she's smiling, she's in a good mood. And you say to her, Mother, may your heart be peaceful and free. May your mind be happy. May your body be healthy. May you be well and happy. So you speak with sincerity and with gratitude. In the same manner, you will uh, wish, make the same wishes to your father, to your grandparents, and to your teachers, especially your Dharma teachers, who have shown you the way, to your mentors, people who have supported you and encouraged you and given you things in order to help you out. So you speak to them from your heart, thanking them for their kindness and wishing them uh, wishes uh, with thoughts of loving kindness matter. Okay? So let's send our thoughts of loving kindness to this first group of people. And now you send your thoughts of loving kindness to your immediate family members. You can send these thoughts of loving kindness to them, either in a group or uh, where your family members are all gathered together, or you can send your loving kindness to them one by one. You can have the image in their faces, in your mind, as you speak to them with kindness. May your heart be peaceful and free. May your mind be happy, may your body be healthy, may you be well and happy. So sending your thoughts of loving kindness to your immediate family members. If you don't have a family of your own, you can think of your brothers and sisters, nephews and nieces.
Now let us imagine that the beings around the world are gathered around us and they have all assumed a human form. So they're beings in every direction. Let us send our thoughts of loving kindness to all the beings in the forward direction. Beings in the forward direction, may your heart be peaceful and free. May your mind be happy. May your body be healthy. May you be well and happy. beings in the rightward direction, sending your wishes of loving kindness to them. Beings in the backward direction. Beings in the leftward direction. Beings in the downward direction. Beings in the upward direction. Sending a loving kindness in all directions throughout the world. Baba to Sabumangalang Rakan to Saba Devata Saba Buddha Nubavena Sagasuti Bhavantate. Bhava to Zabba Mangalang Rakan to Zabba Devata Zabba Dhamma Nubhavena Sadasuti Bhavantate Bhava to Zabba Mangalang Rakan to Zabba Devata Zabba Sangha Nubhavena Sadasuti Bhavantate Let us now share merits. We focus our attention within and in the calmness of our mind, we send out wholesome thoughts and share our merits of the devas, our guardian deities and protectors, so that may they rejoice with these merits and continue to guide and protect ourselves and our loved ones. Sampadam, O Ya Sampadam, Sabi Deva, Sabi Sata, Sabi Buddha, Anumodantu, Sabi Sampati, Siddhiya. Let us uh, think of the departed ones, our relatives and friends who have passed away. May these merits help to bring them relief and happiness wherever they are. Idang me nyata nang hotu sukita hontu nyata yo. Idang me nyata nang hotu sukita hontu nyata yo. Idang me nyata nang hotu sukita hontu nyata yo. Let us make some aspirations. By the grace of these merits, may we not follow the way of the foolish. May we be blessed with wise friends and skillful teachers. May we follow the path of Dhamma wherever we are, and may we one day achieve the highest place of Nibbana. Yava Nibbana Patiya. Let us make a closing invocation, O Buddha, my spiritual master and refuge. 
Thank you for the blessings, guidance, and protection. The Dhamma, holy saints, and spiritual teachers, Bodhisattvas, Dhamma protectors and devas. Thank you for the blessings, guidance, and protection. May the Buddha be at my head, the Dhamma in my heart, and the Sangha by my side to guide and protect me always. May suffering ones be suffering free, and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share in this merit that we have generated. May this merit help to bring them good health, happiness, and peace. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nuggets of mighty power, to share in this merit of ours. And may they long protect the Buddha Sasana. Sad, sad, sad.